autonomous maze solving program and uh, we've learned quite a lot whilst doing it. One of the key things that you need to understand, there are three basic programming constructs or constructions. These are sequencing, selection, iteration. Now, what you're going to be doing today is producing a poster for me that emphasises those three basic constructs. So I thought I'd do a quick demonstration of how each of those was used in your programme. What I've noticed from most people while they were having problems coding is because they didn't understand these three basic constructs. So let's start with sequencing. The best way to look at sequencing is in the initialization settings. So where we created this. Now sequencing is the strict order in which the program does things. Now when I've asked you to explain a program, I've always asked you to explain it one line at a time. And the reason for that is because of sequencing. The computer can only process one line of code at a time. So let's have a look at this code I've got here. Let's zoom in on it so we can see it a bit more clearly. So what we've got here is the option when the green flag is pressed. That is a single operation. That is followed by going to the X minus 206 and the Y minus 401. Obviously then switching to backdrop four. We then erased everything we put the pen down, we pointed in the direction um, 90, which obviously is to the right, and we waited a second. And what that allows us to do, if you look, my little character is here, and when I press the green flag, that's exactly the order in which it happens. He goes to the center, the backdrop switches to backdrop four, which it already is. It then erases everything, puts the pen down, points in the direction, and waits. What difference would it make if I used a different sequence? So what I'm going to do is just put this here so that you can actually see things happen. So again, I'm going to move my character back here as though he's just finished the maze. And I'm going to press the green flag again. Now what you'll see this time is after the green flag is pressed, it'll switch to backdrop 4, which it already is. It will erase everything, it will put the pen down, it will point in direction 90, wait one second, and then it will move back to the start. Now, the effect of that is, first of all, why is it drawn this line? Well, it's drawn the line because after I told it to put the pen down, then I told it to move. Well, of course, once the pen's down, whenever you move, it's going to draw the line. We can fix that again by putting that back here. What we need to look at is selection. Now, selection allows a block of code to run if a conditional statement is true. Now, a conditional statement is a question that can only be answered with true or false. Now, what I've done is I've included two conditional statements here. I've said if, and then I've used the sensing block, the colour red is touching the colour black. And I tell it when it does that to call the subroutine left sensor. I then say, if the colour green is touching the colour black, call the right sensor subroutine. They will only happen if those conditional statements are true. Again, let's see how that works. So I've set up my initialization settings and you'll notice there that after I've pointed in direction, waited one second, I moved 10 steps. That's going to move 10 steps to the right. Immediately following that, because of sequencing, it's going to ask the question if red is touching black. If it is, then it will call the left sensor. Now for me, that went back one step and turned five degrees to the left. The other one, immediately following that, I will then ask the question, is green touching black? So let's just check if that works. So if I press my green flag, it goes back to the beginning, deletes everything, it moves. Now, why didn't it do anything? Well, it's quite simply because it wasn't touching one of the colours. Neither of the conditional statements were true. Right, so what I've done is I've changed my code slightly just so that you can see something happening. I've made my buggy bigger so that you can actually see the effect and you can see where he's starting from. Uh, I've also, like I say, made it much bigger. 
I've changed my left and right sensor to exaggerate the movement so that you can see what happens when selection goes forward. So let's have a look at this code. So obviously we set his side to quite big, we change the backdrop, we erase everything, we put the pen down, we point in the direction, and then we move 10 steps forward. We wait one second, and if it's touching black, then so be it. It will call the left sensor, which is to go backwards 20 steps and turn to the right by five degrees. The same will follow for the green touching black. So let's have a look. We press it once, nothing happens. Why doesn't he move again forward? We'll talk about that in a moment. If I press it again, he'll move 10 steps forward again. This time red touched black. You saw there was a very short pause before doing that. And then when red touched black, it called the left sensor, but it only did it once. That's because of sequencing. Remember in this code, how many times do I get it to check both sensors? The same will work if I put it down here for the green. Remember this time, red isn't going to touch black, but green is. Green's touching black, and it takes an appropriate action. It only checked the sensors once. It checked the left sensor first, then it checked the right sensor. And the reason it did that is because due to sequencing, I've only asked it to check the once. If I want to do more than that, then I'm going to have to use iteration. Now, iteration is the ability to repeat something. So what we're going to do is repeat some code. So this is one of the iteration blocks. There's a couple of others. There's another one here. This is the one that I'm going to use. Now, what do I want to repeat? Well, I want to repeat checking the instructions. I want to repeat how many times I check whether it's touching red or green. So what I'm going to do is put that into place. So if I drag those in here, and now what it's going to do is it's going to forever check if it's touching red or green. Let's see what happens when I click that. Now, why is it not doing anything? It did move its very small five steps, but it's not doing anything. If I drag him over here, so he's touching, you can see it works. If I drag him over here, you can see it works, but I'm having to manually do it. Again, it's down to sequencing of the instructions. I have told it to check both sensors, but it didn't tell it what to do if it wasn't touching one of the sensors. Now the code that did that was this, if you remember. I told it that I wanted it to move five steps forward. I wanted to keep moving five steps forward unless it was touching red or green. So sequencing, I'm going to put that before it checks the sensors. So now what happens when it, let me just stop that. Remember all of these initialization settings, they're all done sequentially. Once they finish, they never run again. All of this gets repeated. So what I ask it to do is move five steps forward. I'm gonna wait one second just for dramatic effect. If it's touching the red sensor on the black, it will call the less sensor subroutine. If it's touching green sensor on black, it will call the right sensor subroutine. Remember, if it's not touching red or not touching green, it won't do this or this. However, it then goes back to here and moves steps five steps forward. And it will keep going back here and here and here forever and ever and ever. Let's see how that works. So we're back at the beginning. We move our five, move five. It's still not touching, it's not touching. Still going. Oh, there we are. Green is now touching black. We saw that come back. It went back and then forward. Now it's not touching, so it's going to move its five steps forward every time. But you can see the red is about to touch black, which it does. And then it steps back and back and turn and turn and turn. And then off we go again. Remember, neither red nor green are touching. So we've told it to keep moving five steps forward. And there we go, it touches again. Now this is where things got confusing, if you remember. This is why I wanted those extra sensors and some of you had problems on that. Now what I'm hoping to establish here is sequencing, selection and iteration. I've attached a PowerPoint, an empty PowerPoint. On there, 
I want you to create a poster. In that poster, I want you to discuss sequence, selection and iteration. I've included some web pages that will help you do some research. And obviously, when you've finished, don't forget to click Submit.